please welcome Edward Scriven. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about MySQL HeatWave. I mean, for some of you, this will be an introduction. For some of you, it'll be an update. So for, for those of you who, who don't know, MySQL HeatWave is Oracle's database service that uses MySQL syntax for SQL. It combines online transaction processing and high-speed in-memory analytics. And other than the Oracle database services that we have in OCI and now available in, in Azure, it is the only database that combines these things. Only Oracle database and MySQL HeatWave combine online, tra online transaction processing and high-speed analytics. Now, why, why is that an advantage? I mean, it, it's, it's very obvious. If you don't have databases that combine both capabilities, it means you have to use two. It means you have, you have a system of record, your online transaction processing database, from which you do ETLs into analytics databases, which means you pay twice, it means that you have to have ETL running, and it means you don't get the most up-to-date information when you're making analytic decisions. So using MySQL HeatWave means you get real-time analytics without paying for additional services. Now, MySQL HeatWave also includes AutoML. What is AutoML? It's a collection of machine learning algorithms built into, built into MySQL HeatWave plus automation to choose the machine learning algorithm you need to achieve your goal and to choose the hyperparameters. So if you have data that you're, that you're analyzing through MySQL HeatWave, you just tell AutoML, I want to do regression, I want to do classification, I want to do, um, you know, I want to do recommendations and other machine learning goals, and AutoML built into MySQL HeatWave figures out what has to happen. It chooses the specific algorithms, it chooses the hyperparameters, it manages the training, and of course, it does the inference. You do not use a separate service to do machine learning against MySQL HeatWave. Now, if you use other services like use Aurora, use Redshift, use Snowflake, you use Sage in AWS. That means you're paying for yet another service, and it means you're moving data between databases. The, data, the data isn't staying in the system of record. That means it's harder to secure. So if you use MySQL HeatWave for machine learning, you don't need to be a data scientist, and you keep the data in exactly one place. Now, MySQL HeatWave is built using something we call autopilot. Autopilot is machine learning driven automation. It automatically tunes MySQL HeatWave. It automatically scales MySQL HeatWave. It's fundamentally what allows MySQL HeatWave to be so fast. And MySQL HeatWave is extremely fast. It's four, so here, here, here's, these, are, these are benchmark numbers. A 10 terabyte TCPH benchmark. Now for MySQL HeatWave, honestly, 10 terabytes is on the small side. In a 10 terabyte benchmark, we're 4.2 times faster than Redshift, 3.3 times faster than Snowflake, 5.6 times faster than BigQuery, 7.4 times faster than Databricks. Now, if we look at price performance, because MySQL HeatWave is not at all expensive, we multiply that, the cost factors times how much faster we are, we have 23 times better price performance than Redshift, 27 times better than Snowflake, 27 times better than BigQuery, 60 times better than, than Databricks. Now, I told you 10 terabytes was a small benchmark for us. We run 500 terabyte benchmarks, and you get very similar multiples, very similar multiples to this. Customers are migrating to MySQL HeatWave. They're migrating to MySQL HeatWave from lots of other kinds of databases. I mean, on-premise databases like SQL Server and DB2, cloud databases like Aurora and Redshift and Snowflake. We've noticed a kind of a common theme across the customers who've migrated so far. We get a lot of customers in digital marketing, gaming, healthcare, and fintech because those customers, they have a lot of data that they want to aggregate from multiple sources and they need real-time analytics. They need to make decisions based on the current state of that data, and they need to do it quickly. These customers also tend to have machine learning demands. They need to do machine learning analytics. In other words, they need to do regression, or they need to do prediction of some kind. They need to do classification. They need to do recommendation. So MySQL HeatWave is a very natural choice for them. Just to give you an example, Astuda migrated from a combination 
of Aurora and Google BigQuery. So their, their transactional system was Aurora, their analytic system was Google BigQuery. They created an ETL, of course, from Aurora into Big Google BigQuery because, you know, one can do transactions, the other can do analytics, they, they, the other one can't, can't do both. When they migrated to MySQL, MySQL Heatwave, they got 300 times faster performance, 300 times faster performance than Google BigQuery. They had an 85% reduction in cost. They eliminated, of course, that ETL. That means their data is in one single place, one single thing to, to worry about where, you know, is it secure? They get real-time analytics. When they run their analytic queries, they don't have to worry about when did that ETL last run? The data's up to date. And they can scale, they can scale up and down as their, their, their needs required. AI Call, very interesting company. Their job, their whole business is providing uh, machine learning models to financial institutions to help them make risk assessments, assessments on their loan portfolios. Now, AI Call, what the, what they the way they originally started is they had a bunch of data scientists, they wrote a lot of code, they created a lot of, a lot of custom scripts to do, to, do, to do modelings and training, right? And then they tried MySQL Heatwave. And what they found is if they just used MySQL Heatwave with its built-in automatic ML, they didn't have to do any of that custom work. Instead, you know, they could build ML models in a week instead of three months. That means, that means that they, could, they can choose to retrain the models, rebuild the models every week as, as the data changes. They improve liquidity across their clients by 20%. And the reason is the automatically generated models by MySQL Heatwave had 92% accuracy. Their handcrafted models had only 86% accuracy. More accuracy means lower risk, means more liquidity. So after we built MySQL Heatwave and we delivered it to our customers, you know, they told us some things, right? One thing, they said that, well, we have a lot of data in files, okay? So, so yes, you could take the file data and you could load it into MySQL, you know, load it into MySQL database files, which can then query with, with Heatwave. But of course, you know, that's a process you've got to manage, right? And, and we've worked hard to make that fast. In fact, we're much faster at, at, um, at loading data into, into MySQL database files than, say, Aurora is. Right? But still, why do it? They want to leverage machine learning, the auto ML capabilities of MySQL Heatwave on their files without having to ingest it into MySQL. They, they, they don't want to have to use, you know, cost, you know, they don't want to have to use separate cloud services, right? So if they keep their data in files, they couldn't, before they couldn't use MySQL Heatwave, they had to use something else. They didn't like that. And of course, they wanted it to run in multiple clouds. So that's why this summer, we launched MySQL Heatwave Lakehouse. MySQL Heatwave can now directly query data stored in files in Object Store. So we pull the file data directly into the memory of the, of the MySQL Heatwave cluster and query it there. So that means that you do not need to ingest it into MySQL. And it also means that MySQL Heatwave Lakehouse becomes a service that you can use for all of your data. Any data that may exist in files, I mean, generated by IoT devices, log files, exports from other databases, all of it can be directly queried now from MySQL, in MySQL Heatwave using Lakehouse. MySQL Heatwave, by the way, is massively scalable. 16 gigabytes all the way up to 512 terabytes. So however big your data is, you almost certainly can analyze it using MySQL Heatwave. Now, uh, NTT Solmar, they're, uh, they're an ebook publisher in Japan. For, they say, Heatwave Lakehouse allows us to easily and quickly load data on object storage into Heatwave and combine it with MySQL data for analysis. And that's another key facet of MySQL Heatwave Lakehouse. You don't have to just query data that's in file. You can have some data, maybe that you're managing through OLTP application, you can join it with data that you're loading from files. So you can combine data that's, that's from OLTP and files together in one set of queries. MySQL Heatwave Lakehouse is incredibly fast. So here we're running a 500 terabyte TCPH benchmark, 500 terabytes using Lakehouse. Okay, we are nine times faster than Redshift. 
We're 17 times faster than Databricks. We're 17 times faster than Snowflake. We're, we're 36 times faster than Google BigQuery. Price performance, similar numbers. Eight times cheaper than Redshift. 16 times less expensive than Databricks. 22 times uh, less expensive than Snowflake. 30 times less expensive than Google BigQuery. It's very easy to use MySQL Keywave Lakehouse. All you have to do is run autopilot. So remember, autopilot is that machine learning driven automation that we build into, into MySQL Heatwave. You run autopilot, you point it at the files that you wanna, you wanna query, you wanna analyze. MySQL autopilot does two things. It figures out how much data have you got? How big of a cluster do I, do, do, do I need to provision? It also figures out your schema. So using both metadata that's stored in the file and analysis of the data that's in those files, it will automatically generate a schema for you to use. And then you just run the queries. You provision the cluster and run the queries. And those queries, as I said, can be querying files that are, that are, that are querying the files that are in the object store and also online transaction processing tables that you just, you're maintaining directly in MySQL eWave. So here's an example. I run autopilot. I point it at my files. It tells me how big of a cluster I need. You can automatically provision that cluster. Here's the schema that it figured out. It tells, it's telling me, you know, here's the table based on that file, these column names, these data types. Now, you know, you could change that if you like. You can do something, something different, right? But, but what it actually figures out, what it infers is usually quite good. Loading data into Lakehouse is very fast. Now, uh, the way HeatWave works is we use, we use a cluster of nodes, we load data into memory, and, and process the queries in memory. That's why it's so fast. Now, that means you, know, you still have to, you, the data is at rest in the files. You don't transform the data at rest, but you do have to put it in memory. The memory loading of MySQL HeatWave Lakehouse is much faster than the competition. Twice as fast as Snowflake, six times as fast as Databricks, eight times as fast as Google BigQuery, nine times as fast as Redshift. Now you might wonder, okay, got a lot of flexibility here. I can keep my data in files. I don't need to ingest it. What do I give up? The answer is nothing. You don't, you don't give up uh, analytic performance. So here we ran a 10 terabyte TCPH, TPCH benchmark. You, okay, and we've comparing ourselves both to the competition, but also HeatWave after we've ingested the data into, into MySQL data files and HeatWave using Lakehouse. We get the same performance whether I ingested it into MySQL or I'm just using Lakehouse. Same performance for keeping the data in files and putting it in the database. All right, so one thing to just make very clear, lots of data that you generate goes into files like, okay, things like IoT, as I said, or, or you know, sensor data of some, some kind, you know, log files, you know, explicit data exports. Okay, I generate a bunch of CSV files from some other application. Definitely, all of that you can easily load into MySQL Lakehouse. But lots of, of, of databases, in the cloud especially, generate formats that MySQL Lakehouse can load. So that means if I have an Aurora, uh, an Aurora backup, I can load that and analyze that directly in, in MySQL Lake, Lakehouse. I don't need to do any sort of explicit data export. I can just use my backup. So that means HeatWave Lakehouse is a great way to analyze transactional data that you still are keeping in other data source. Industry analysts, I think it's fair to say, they love HeatWave. IDC says, organizations looking for best value in cloud should look at MySQL Lakehouse. Wikibon, the ability to, to load and create data on such a massive number of nodes, hundreds of nodes, in parallel, is the first in the industry. Nan says, Heatwave Lakehouse enables you to stay ahead of the competition. MySQL Heatwave, it's optimized to run in more than one cloud. Of course, it runs in OCI, it's available in OCI. It also runs in AWS. So we use AWS infrastructure to run MySQL Heatwave in AWS, including Lakehouse. So that means that if you use Heatwave Lakehouse in AWS, there is no data egress fee. You can analyze files that are stored, that are stored in S3 buckets. Azure, through our partnership with Microsoft, uh, you can also use MySQL Heatwave Lakehouse. 
Heatwave Lake House is, 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 as I said, is available in AWS, and it's currently limited availability, and soon, of course, it will be generally available. And with that, I'd like to actually now invite on the stage Nipan Agarwal. Nipan is the head of, of MySQL Engineering, and he's, he's, uh, he's frankly the person who's spearheaded a lot of the innovation that you see as part of Heatwave. Nipan, please, please join me on stage. Thank you, Edward. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So what I'm going to show you is, with Heatwave Lake House, how easy it is for you to analyze query, to run machine learning on hundreds of terabytes of data, which could be coming from a variety of sources. The data could be in the object store, the data could be exported from other databases, or the data, the data could be inside a transaction table in MySQL Heatwave. So let's uh, play the video, please. So to start off with, I have an instance of Aurora, which is running in AWS. I'm going to export the Aurora database into a Parquet file. So the export from Aurora happens into a Parquet file, which goes into S3. I'm going to simply copy the location of this file, and I'm going to provide this as an input to an instance of MySQL Heatwave. Now, this is Heatwave Lakehouse running in AWS, so there is no data movement happening. The service is running inside AWS. So this is an instance of Heatwave. I will specify the, uh, the location of the export from Aurora. And the first step when I specify this location is that Heatwave invokes autopilot. Autopilot automatically determines the mapping based on the various attributes of this export file to the in-memory representation of Heatwave. For instance, how many attributes there are? What is the name of these attributes? What is the data type, precision, and such? And this is done automatically. Once I've specified this mapping, it's just the mapping. The data is not being copied uh, to Heatwave yet. Next, I'm going to uh, specify the location of about 100 terabytes of TPC DS files, which are stored in a CSV format. I just specify the location of these files, invoke autopilot, and autopilot will do a similar mapping information. So it's actually scanning the data. It is not just based on the header information. It's actually scanning the data in a very intelligent manner so it can scan about half a petabyte of data in less than a minute. And it determines the appropriate mappings, the names of the attributes, the data types, the precision, and such, so that it can map into the memory of Heatwave. Once this mapping is specified, before I can run the queries, I basically need to provision a cluster of the appropriate size. Now, this is the list of the objects which you see from the console of Heatwave on AWS, and you can see that there are some objects coming from S3, there are some objects which are stored in the relational table, and all of this is visible from the same console. So now, if I want to provision a cluster so I can process this 100 terabytes of data, with Heatwave, Autopilot automatically determines what is the optimal cluster size. With other services, you have to do a guesswork that, hey, what's the right size? With Heatwave, you can estimate the cluster size, Autopilot runs machine learning, and predicts exactly the number of nodes needed. So in this case, the system is telling us that we need 222 nodes, and it also specifies the in-memory representation for this data. Now, I'll take this number of 222 nodes, and I'll edit the cluster, and in this process, I'm provisioning a 222-node cluster with Heatwave. This takes about 12 minutes. So in 12 minutes, I'm provisioning a 222-node cluster. Once this is done, now the only step remaining is for me to load data, this 100 terabytes of data coming from a variety of sources into Heatwave. We can load this 100 terabytes of data in parallel into the Heatwave cluster, and it takes just about two hours. So in two hours, we load this 100 terabytes of data into Heatwave, and now the system is ready to run queries. Now, the query I'm going to show is it's one of the TPC DS queries. And what this query does is that it looks at the sales for various products for a given day or the week this year and compares it with the same time period last year. So basically, what this query is doing is trying to like see what is the change in the trend of the sales of various product teams or, or, or product lines compared to last year. And structurally, it's a moderately complex SQL query. It has four joins, group buys, order by. 
Now we're executing this query on 100 terabytes of data. It takes 36 seconds to process 100 terabytes of data, and we get the results. Now, one of the properties of HeatWave is that it offers real-time analytics. As Edward was talking about, that's one of the benefits customers see from HeatWave, which means that if I update one of the transaction tables in the MySQL database, and if I rerun the query, I should see the updated results in real time. So let's go ahead and update one of the tables, and then we are going to rerun the query. When we rerun the query, we expect to see the updated results. So let's see if we see that. So we see the updated results, which is expected. But what is interesting is that the execution time dropped from 36 seconds to 24 seconds. Why is that? Because we don't have a result cache. The reason is autopilot. Autopilot learns from the previous queries which have been run. It provides this information to the MySQL optimizer, which then does a better job in terms of creating better execution plans. So the system gets intelligent over time. Now, on the same cluster, using data in the object store, I'm going to run machine learning with HeatWave Lakehouse. So we have a bank marketing data set, and I'm going to show how simple and automated it is to create a model, to run predictions, and to run explanations. So I'll pick one of the uh, files over here, which is a bank marketing data set. And the only thing we need to specify is the column on which we want to run, uh, we want to create the model, and the kind of model we want to create. So we're going to create a classification model. And optionally, we can specify the optimization metric. Once this is done, with a single click, HeatWave AutoML creates a model. It does the pre-processing, figures out the optimal algorithm, the right set of features, the optimal hyperparameters, creates the model, stores the model inside the database without the data or the model ever leaving HeatWave, everything being done on the same cluster. And we see that the system chose XGBoost classifier as the algorithm. Now that I have the model stored in the database, I can run predictions. But before I do that, I want to run explanations to see that for this bank marketing data set, what are the attributes which really influence the prediction? So we run the explanation, and we see that the duration of the call which the salesperson made to the customer is the leading indicator of the outcome, which is intuitive, that if the call is lasting longer, there's a higher chance that the customer is going to buy the product. Now, since I'm kind of satisfied with the, call, uh, the, the model, I can now run predictions. I run prediction on a test data set. The first column is predicting what is the predicted um, outcome. The second column is showing what is the real outcome. For the most part, the values are the same, but in one of the cases, like the second row, you can see that the predicted outcome is different from the real outcome. In this case, if the customer is interested, you're interested, we have a built-in what-if analysis tool, which you can go and query and use to kind of get an information as to why was the uh, outcome different than the predicted, out, uh, predict, predicted result. So what I've shown you is that with HeatWave Lakehouse, how simple and efficient it is to do transaction processing, analytics, lakehouse, and machine learning. This function is available on AWS, OCI, and Azure. Thank, Thank you so everybody. much. Great job, Nepal. Now, we'll, uh, we'll actually see Nepal again uh, just in a few more minutes to give you another demo. Um, now, I think what he showed was actually very impressive. I mean, if you compare, um, if you compare what, what um, uh, HeatWave AutoML provides to, compared to other vendors, I mean, there's frankly no comparison, right? I mean, I mean HeatWave AutoML, it's built into the database. It's integrated with explanation, right? You get automatic tuning. It, it offers classification, regression, you know, anomaly detection, uh, recommendations, text, you know, text processing. It's, it's very full-featured. And one thing I want to make clear, um, exactly the same AutoML capability exists for my, MySQL database files, data that you've actually ingested into, into MySQL HeatWave, and through MySQL Lakehouse. You get the same capabilities. Now, I just mentioned a couple of things like text processing and, and recommendations. These are new features. We're just coming out with them. So you can now actually um, create embeddings for text in in uh, using AutoML for, for MySQL HeatWave Lakehouse. So that means you can do things like um, determine the relevance of words for documents. You can understand the context of, of words in a sentence within, within, um, within HeatWave. And recommendations is, um, 
uh, you know, if you use a service like, uh, okay, it's a streaming, a streaming music service and it, and, it, and it plays a different song for you based on what you've already listened to, or, um, you know, it's a shopping website and, and you're going to be presented the next offer based on what you've already bought, that is a recommender system. And so the way the, way, um, the recommender system works in, in um, MySQL Heatwave is it's, it's using something called Bayesian personalized uh, recommendation. So just based on the behavior of, of a person through the application, you know, what things did they click on, what things did they buy, what, you know, what, what, um, you know, what, what, what songs did they listen to, you can, you can, you can learn with, um, you know, actually startling accuracy, you know, the kinds of, of other items they're going to want to consume. It's a very powerful feature. Everybody, of course, wants to talk about generative AI, and so, so do we. Okay, so, so um, uh, we've added to MySQL Heatwave a vector store. So a vector store enables users to use um, large language models to generate text that is more appropriate and more precise and accurate for you as opposed to the general world. And so I'm gonna actually invite Nippon right back up on stage to tell you exactly how that works. Thank you, Edward. With the support for generative AI in MySQL HeatWave, customers can now interact with MySQL HeatWave in natural language, meaning they can ask questions in natural language, they can get responses in natural language. But for generative AI, we use LLMs. Now, LLMs are trained on public data. And what that means is that if you want to search data within the enterprise, if you want to search proprietary data, LLMs are not going to give you accurate answers. And for that, we are introducing Vector Store inside HeatWave. Vector Store takes documents either from the object store or from inside the database, creates embeddings, it's an in dimensional embeddings from these documents. And when the user asks questions, it does a similarity search of these embeddings. The output of the Vector Store is sent as an input to the LLM. So the LLM takes the original question from the user, and this context and the results from the LLM after the input from the vector store is provided is a lot more accurate. Now note that the vector store output is a, just an input to the LLMs. LLMs are not trained on this proprietary data, so you don't run the risk of any information leakage from the LLMs. Now let me show you a demo of the capabilities which we are introducing in HeatWave with vector store and generative AI. So let's play the demo, please. So over here, what I'm going to show you is how users can interact with HeatWave using natural language, and what are the advantages of having vector store inside HeatWave. So what I'm showing over here is uh, we have Jupyter Notebook, which is connected to an instance of MySQL HeatWave. All the machine learning capabilities of HeatWave are exposed as a SQL interface. That's why any SQL client can connect to HeatWave and leverage the machine learning capabilities. So we are augmenting the existing interfaces we have for machine learning for generative AI capabilities. So for instance, we have one of these interfaces called ML Predict Row, which is used for machine learning. We are augmenting it so that the question which the user is asking is going to be sent as an argument to this function. We are introducing a couple of new interfaces for the vector store uh, uh, management, and, uh, but these are all exposed as SQL interface. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pre-trained LLM model load it into HeatWave, and then ask a few questions. So the first question I'm going to ask is, why did Astura, one of our customers, pick MySQL HeatWave? The system responds, which is based on LLM, that they chose HeatWave because it was the best choice for the project. Kind of OK, but kind of not very specific answer. Now for the second one, why did Tetris.co achieve uh, benefits they achieved by HeatWave? It's giving a very vague answer, and this is a problem of hallucination, which LLMs suffer from. And then for the last question, how much cost savings did Tetris.co achieve with HeatWave? The system, the LLM gives an answer of 5%, which is incorrect. Now, by the way, this is Tetris.co, which is a marketing analytics company based in LED, not to be confused with the gaming company Tetris. Now let's introduce Vector Store. So we have a repository of documents stored in HeatWave Lakehouse. We are going to like load them into the vector store and then ask the same questions again and see what is the difference in the quality of the results. So once I've done loading, I'm going to ask the same question again. Why did Estuda pick MySQL HeatWave? 
the system now responds to the LLM with the vector store input, to the superior query speed, the on-demand scalability, and the affordable cost of HeatWave helped Estuda expand their business. This is a lot more specific answer. For the second one, that what benefits did Tetris.co achieve by using HeatWave? Now, the system responds that the improved performance, where earlier the queries were taking about minutes, now they're down to a fraction of a second, helps the engagement with C-level executives, which further deepens the relationship with the customer. This is the advantage. Now, this is a much more specific and precise answer which you are getting. And then finally, for the question, which is what cost savings did Tetris achieve by HeatWave? The system tells you that they migrated from Aurora in Redshift to HeatWave, and in the process, they saved about 50%. And this is the correct answer. Most of the customers who migrate from Aurora, Redshift to HeatWave, we see that they save about 50%. So what I've just shown you is with generative AI and vector store capabilities in HeatWave, customers can interact with HeatWave in natural language. And with vector store, customers can now query enterprise data, data which is stored inside the database and not suffer from the hallucination problems of LLMs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That, was, that, that was great, Nepan. Thank you. Okay, so uh, now we'll, we'll change gears a little bit. We've talked, uh, we've talked about Lake House, we've talked about AutoML, um, including generative AI. Now we're gonna, we'll, we'll go through some, some other enhancements in, in, um, in MySQL HeatWave Lake House. The first is, um, you know, if, you're, you know if, you're, if you're an existing MySQL database user, you probably know there is some kind of stored procedure language in, in MySQL, and honestly, it doesn't get used that much, probably for good reason. Okay, well now you can use JavaScript in MySQL HeatWave. So you can create JavaScript stored procedures and functions that you can use through SQL. Now Oracle, it's, it's, based, it's, it's implemented using something Oracle Grawl, okay? Grawl is a, is a polyglot language processor. So um, we, can we can build very efficient, very efficient um, um, virtual machines to run lots of dynamic programming languages, including JavaScript and Python and Java. So we've, we've put Grawl into, into MySQL HeatWave. And so here's an example of some Java, JavaScript stored procedures. So in this case, what I'm doing is I want a function that constructs an URL based on some parameters. Now, you know, you could try to do that through SQL, it would be a pain in the neck, okay? Um, I'm gonna add another store procedure that actually updates um, rows in the database. So I'm gonna update the, I, the, the URLs that items in my, in my product database point to. It's very simple to write this in JavaScript. You know, all of you probably know JavaScript or you have programmers who know JavaScript. Well, now you can, you can use JavaScript inside MySQL HeatWave, right, to implement uh, application-specific functionality. A good, a good companion to that, of course, is JSON. I mean, JavaScript is great at processing JSON. I mean, that's where JSON came from, right? I mean, you can take literal JavaScript strings that are, that are data, right, and that's what, that's what, that's what JSON is. Right? And so you can use those JavaScript store procedures inside, inside MySQL HeatWave to manipulate JSON objects. Now, the, the fundamental capability to store uh, JSON in MySQL is not new. I mean, we've been doing that for a while. Right? Well, now we've made it much faster. So if you run queries, um, just like simple filter queries, you know, select from some table where something is true, right? and you're doing that with JSON objects, it's now 20 times faster than before. I mean, if you're doing aggregation queries, 22 times faster than before. If you're doing joints, big joints, 144 times faster than before. So I think at this point, it's fair to say, JSON is now a practical data type to use for, for the data that you're storing in MySQL HeatWave. And to manipulate that data and maybe create that data, you can use JavaScript stored procedures. Now, I've mentioned Autopilot before, and Autopilot really is kind of the the, the magic ingredient of MySQL HeatWave. It's the thing that, that lets us um, automate everything for you and lets us run so fast. Um, we've added a few key capabilities to it. One is autopilot indexing. So, so another is uh, auto compression, another is adaptive query execution, and finally, auto unload. Now, I'll, I'll tell you in detail about the first three. Um, uh, what, what autopilot will now do for you is it takes a look at your queries, it takes a look at your, at your schema, and it figures out what indexes should you create, what indexes should you delete, 
right? And by the way, it's, it's not just considering query performance, it's also considering DML performance. Because you know, the more indexes you have, the more secondary indexes you have, the slower it is to perform, perform DML operations. So we run this, of course, we benchmark it, we run like standard benchmarks and, and, and applications that people use to evaluate da databases. And what we see is, is if we compare um, the standard set of, of of indexes that come with that benchmark or come with that application with a set of indexes recommended by Autopilot, we get the same performance or even slightly better performance, or in one case, much better performance, right, for queries. And DML performance, of course, is faster because in many cases it recommends fewer indexes. So that means DML is going to be faster. We have added what we call adaptive query execution. Now, um, uh, Nippon in his, in, his, in his talk, he, or his demo, he showed you uh, that, that basically when you ran a query once in HeatWave, it ran a certain speed, took a certain amount of time. When you ran a second time, it ran about 50% faster, or maybe a third faster, right? The reason why is that, is that um, Autopilot had collected statistics about the data and the query execution as it was running the query, and next time you ran the query, it, it was smarter. Well now, HeatWave is smart while you're running the query. So while you're running the query, HeatWave figures out it should do things differently. So what it means is that the time to complete the first query is faster than it was before. So you know, just, just kind of uh, taking a look at, at some TPCDS queries, right, and various data sizes, the improvement in the first run is, is, you know, is like 10% in the worst case for the largest uh, load, 25% in the best case. So, so adaptive query execution speeds up that first query execution. We've added auto compression. Now, auto compression means, you know, uh, it basically Heatway figures out data that you should compress that's stored in memory, right? And you get, you get, you know, pretty significant memory savings. I mean, in, in the case of TPCDS, it's 25% memory savings. Now you might think, well, all right, you know, if I compress things, I, that means I have to uncompress it, you know, when I want to query it, and that's going to make things slower. So it's like a, it's kind of a, a you know, a, you know, a size speed trade-off. The answer is no. Actually, generally things get a little faster, right? In the case of TPCS, where we got 25% compression, 6% better. In the case of TPCH, not quite as good at memory compression, 6%, but it runs 10% faster. And the reason why it runs faster, even though you're compressing it, is that CPUs these days are just much, much faster than memory. So it's worth it to compress it so that you move less, less, less data in and out of memory. So I hope now you all have a good feeling for what MySQL HeatWave is. I hope you now understand that we, that we have Lakehouse and that, and that we have AutoML and we have just a really unbelievable drumbeat of innovation coming out of Nippon's team. And all of that really is driven by what we hear from customers, right? Helping our customers deal with all kinds of data. You know, helping our customers, you know, have one single service to do transaction processing and real-time analytics. Helping our customers deal with this like data deluge of data in files and object store. Helping our customers have fully automated ML because let's face it, you know, doing machine language is still requires a, an amazing amount of expertise. And frankly, people who, who make a lot of money that you have to hire to get it done for you, right? And of course, of course, we run in multiple clouds. So where your data is, where your middle tier is, that's where, that is where you're gonna find MySQL HeatWave. Thank you very much. So oh, I should tell you, hey, wait, 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 I'm sorry, I blew it, there's one more slide. If you wanna learn more, if you want to learn more, right, there are actually several sessions, including one starting at 5 o'clock, for the rest of the day and tomorrow. Now, thank you all very much.